Well, folks, in today's video, we're going to be unboxing some parcels which arrived at the post office recently. This one right here comes from a guy named Jim, and he's from Iowa. Unfortunately, this parcel uh, suffered some damage. Basically, a few days ago, I went out the front door on my way out to work, and all over the driveway, there were Oreos everywhere. And I was kind of confused because I haven't bought Oreos in months. So anyways, what happened was that raccoons actually got in the garage and unfortunately ripped this thing open. So I don't know if everything inside is okay or not, but I figure we'll open it up anyway and we'll find out. To Harrison, i.e. SMT Mainline, I hope this finds you and your family well. My name is Jen Letts and I've been watching your YouTube channel for a while now. It's been a fun channel to watch. It reminds me of hanging out with my best friends when we were younger building RC planes in his basement. His dad had a huge HO layout which could run four to five trains simultaneously. I believe it was a Union I believe he was a Union Pacific guy. It was always a fun day when he was running trains. Fast forward a few decades at my local hobby shop, an awesome place called Haven in urban Iowa, where I was trying to convince myself not to spend too much money. I guess I'm a scale kit guy these days. I didn't see anything that caught my eye, but they had a large selection of train stuff. Normally trains are out of my comfort zone, but I felt emboldened having watched several of your repair videos and found myself at the consignment table. I recalled your birthday in the spring in one of your unboxing videos and decided to put together a little birthday surprise for you. I picked up some things I hope you'll find interesting and useful. There was a local collector that must have passed recently as there was a lot of locomotives in the display case. I picked an engine that I thought looked cool and they tested it for me. It ran okay but rather stinky so I picked up some stuff to help you do your thing and get it running top notch. I think it's an Atherton engine. I tried to pick something you might not have. Unfortunately, restore to Burlington Northern pretty similar, just my luck. Anyways, I threw in some snacks to bolster you through your repair videos. Happy birthday. Well, thank you so much for the uh, kind letter. I, <laughs> I think some of those snacks might be gone, but I still see a few things in there, so I'll have to look through. Anyways, he appears to have included some pictures of the uh, hobby shop. That indeed is a pretty cool looking place. Anyways, let's have a look and see what kind of stuff's in here. Guess raccoons don't really like Pop-Tarts, but I certainly do, so that's pretty cool. Got some LaBelle oil. Got a pine lumber caboose. That looks pretty sharp. Various farm animals. And a whole bunch of figures. Those will certainly be put to good use. Oh, a bright boy. These are uh, terrific for cleaning your track. I know not everybody likes them, but uh, I find they work pretty well, actually. Plastic sanding needles. I don't know if I've worked with those before. Huh. Yeah, we've got some more uh, LaBelle oils. That's awesome. Yeah, they didn't get into this one. That's great. The LaBelle 106. This is probably my favorite grease. Now it's some sort of a hopper kit from Athern. And some brushes. Oh, nice. It's a bobber caboose. I'm a huge fan of these things. I've probably got a few, but uh, I don't think I have this uh, exact one. So thanks a bunch. And we've got another hopper, so uh, this looks pretty nice. It's a Chicago Outliner Beltline. I thought the letter mentioned there being a locomotive in this lot. Unfortunately, that does not appear to be here, so I guess the raccoons must have made off with it. I have no idea why they would have taken it, but uh, that's kind of unfortunate. But uh, either way, Jim, thank you so much. This was ridiculously uh, generous. Uh, these kits and uh, all of these lubricants and stuff are definitely going to be put to great use. So thanks a bunch. Anyways, on to the next box. So this next box comes from a guy named Robert, and he's from Michigan. I have no idea what the contents of this box is, but there's an easy way to find out. 
Your SMT Mainline, I thought since I'm doing an all-passenger train Christmas, I thought I'd give you a couple N-scale locomotives, one steam and one diesel, and some N-scale passenger cars. Three of them are 1800-style passenger cars. The Cobbine car with them I fitted with an N-scale knuckle coupler so it can work with the steam locomotive I included. I hope you like these trains and run them for a Christmas video. Your viewer, Robert Lucero. So thank you so much for uh, sending this in. It looks like this one has been uh, sitting a little while, uh, but uh, let's open it up anyway. And uh, check that out, a Norfolk Southern Operation Lifesaver locomotive, and this is a uh, GP40. And I got some sort of a passenger car. I don't see if, I can't see if this is from any particular railroad. Looks pretty sharp though. And we got another one, as well as a baggage car. And then uh, right here is the uh, Christmas train, the 1800 style cars. Unfortunately, it looks like these got slightly damaged during shipping, but uh, certainly nothing that can't be fixed. That's more like it. Uh, I decided to leave the uh, couplers out because I might end up upgrading those to uh, knuckles anyway. But uh, what a beautiful set of cars. They look absolutely awesome, and I'm sure they'll look great behind that locomotive. And right here is the steam locomotive. I've got a very similar one in HO scale, but uh, this one looks fantastic. I suspect it's one of Bachmann's newer releases, because I don't recall their N-scale steam engines having a powered drawbar. And uh, this locomotive is... This is called an 060. So thank you so much for everything, uh, Robert. This was uh, very generous of you. We'll definitely have to uh, test these locomotives motives out on the end scale layout later but uh, for now I think we'll just uh, go ahead and open up another box so this next one here comes from a guy named Jared and he's from New York this is one of the uh, larger boxes we'll be opening up today anyways let's uh, crack it open and see what's inside Hello SMT, I just wanted to say I'm a huge fan of your channel and have a couple HO scale trains for you. Some of them are a little broken. There's a custom steam engine 040 in here that I never got to finish. There's four diesel engines in here that maybe you could fix and try to get running again. There's also a completely disassembled Nightmare Express train in here that you can use for scrapper parts. There's a shell of a boxcar, two very long passenger cars, and two railroad cranes. Uh, you can check out my TikTok, Jared Nolt 101 where I sometimes upload train content that you might like. Thanks again for getting back to getting me back into this hobby. I'll continue to watch your amazing content. Well, thank you so much for the uh, kind words there, Jared. Now let's go ahead and uh, see what these locomotives are all about. Kansas City Southern. That's a railroad you don't hear a lot of. I, this might be my very first piece of Kansas City Southern uh, rolling stock. And then we've got an unbranded uh, piece of rolling stock. I think it might be from Athern. I could be mistaken on that. I don't know what the heck this is. I was expecting it to be a, uh, a jack-in-the-box or something. But uh, yeah, anyways, I, I see what you mean. Uh, this has definitely all seen better days, but... I'm up for a challenge. We got some various pieces of uh, rolling stock. A lot of this is pretty busted up, but uh, I don't think it's beyond repair. And then finally, here are the uh, locomotives. Here's your classic Tyco Midnight Special Shark Nose. Paintwork on this looks to be in pretty good shape, but it's missing its. Uh, Powered drive. Got a lifelike Santa Fe. I think this is a GP40. It's got the problem, which is quite common on these, where the uh, back truck has popped off. You can sometimes fix that with a nail. I might show that later on. Uh, but either way, it looks okay. And then we got a dummy version of that. And a Mantua Tyco F unit. So thank you so much for uh, all the trains, Jared. You should uh, all make for some fun projects. We'll uh, certainly try to uh, test these out later at some point in the video. 
But there are still more boxes to go. This next box comes from a guy named Gavin from Mississippi. I'm really curious to see what's inside this one here. So let's have a look. Happy 22nd birthday! Hey Harrison, glad to see you've made it to 22. To celebrate your 22nd, I went ahead and sent some decent quality items for you to keep. It has been a magnificent journey for your channel and I hope it can stay that way. Your videos are always nice to watch and there's nothing else to do during the day. I've gone ahead and sent a couple pieces for your end scale layout as well as HO. It's always nice to see your reaction to the stuff I find for you. I will say that out of all the stuff I've sent you, I feel like this tops it all. My favorite types of videos are the ones where you go through Larkspur and other neat shops to find stuff for your layout. You've told me you always wanted to go to Milwaukee, and I see why it's one of the greatest cities in the world. I have a special connection with the city even though I'm from Memphis, Tennessee area. When you go, I'd love to see a video made of the trip. Check out the Walters Hobby Shop headquarters as well as Summerfield's Trains and Hobbies, which is my personal favorite. But enough talking, let's open some gifts. Have a happy 22nd. Best wishes. P.S. My friends Tavin and uh, Zach are huge fans. They say hello. Sincerely, Controller Packers. Well, thank you so much for all the kind words. And uh, yes, I would I would love to uh, visit Milwaukee at some point and check out uh, Walters and stuff. If I do that, I certainly will make some videos about it. And uh, there are more train tours on the way. So thank you so much for that. Now let's uh, go through all the stuff and uh, see what's inside. This one's just uh, labeled open last, so we'll avoid that one until the end. Well, let's just begin right here. Lionel HO. Well, that's something you don't see too often. Sled X. Very cool. So it's some sort of like a Christmas themed car. That's really nice. I've never seen that before. Oh, look at that. It is a Walters Proto Caboose from the Sioux line. That looks really sharp. City Hall and a police station, and this is uh, all in Inskill, and it appears to be interior lit. What a neat little building. Got some sort of a car from uh, Inner Mountain. Let me see what this is. An Evans Coil car. I wonder what these are used to transport. Either way, it looks very nice. I don't really have a lot of stuff from Inner Mountain either, so that's, uh, that's awesome. A couple smaller things before the biggie. Awesome, it's a Milwaukee road car. I love it, it looks really cool. Got a nice uh, HO scale van of some kind. Hank's Country Diner. Huh, I don't know much about this, but uh, I like it. And then finally, last but not least, the big mystery. Something from Ather and Genesis. <laughs> My goodness, look at that. Wow. So if I'm not mistaken, what this is, is the uh, Essential Workers uh, Unit, which they came out with uh, a couple uh, years ago. And uh, it's an SD70 ACE. Uh, I'm just amazed that uh, somebody would, you know, go and send this. Check that out. What an awesome looking locomotive. I, I love all the American stars on it. Got the bacon stripes on the back. It's, uh, that's just awesome. Controller Packers, you've really outdone yourself this time. This is just insane. This is so generous. I, uh, I'm flattered. My God. Look at that Montana Rail Link. What a beauty. Well, we're definitely going to have to run that later. I'm uh, actually just going to go put that on a table so it doesn't get, uh, dropped or anything like that. Well, controller packers, I don't know what to say. This is just uh, so generous of you. Thank you so much. Uh, we're definitely going to test all this stuff out and uh, place these vehicles and buildings on uh, various parts of the layout. 
but there are a few more boxes to open up so we're gonna do that first now this next box comes from a guy named richard from north dakota unfortunately most of the tape came off when i was removing all the addresses and so on but uh, we can still open it up and see what is inside there is one thing which i do know about but i'll uh, get to that later this looks exciting let's uh have a look howdy harrison from richard t rats bird in west fargo nd take care have fun with this stuff i hope to see something running on a live stream pass them on if you don't want something sorry i wrote a book here i sent you some things you may not have which is hard to do by the way uh the big thing you were looking for is the river rossi big boy tender so uh, that's the one thing that uh, he did mention uh, as some of you might have seen a few months ago, I did a video where I worked on a River Rossi Big Boy, and I've wanted to do a charity giveaway for a while, but that Big Boy did not have a tender. Anyway, uh, Richard reached out to me and said that he had a tender and was willing to send it to me to uh, be part of that uh, charity. So uh, we'll be doing that in the not-so-distant future, because that is hopefully somewhere in this box. Anyways, back to the letter. Uh, enclosed is the following. A KCS SD40-2 Snoot Nose Athern fitting for the CN merger. I believe that's Canadian Pacific now. Um, a BNSF SD40-2 with a 79 Athern KDs. A Canadiana boxcar with a CN Ghosted on it. A Tyco KD metal wheels, a Hershey's tank car, yes, another one for you with KD metal wheels, a Northern Pacific U25 River Rossi, good runner with KDs, a brief history on Northern Pacific, it was part of Burlington Northern merger in the 70s, along with the Great Northern, Spokane, Portland, and Seattle, and the Chicago, Burlington, and Quincy railroads, Union Pacific TR5, supposed to be 1070, cow and a half set, Rocky Mountain Lines, SD40- SD24, got a caboose, Chicago Central GP9, supposed to be a GP18, close enough, former Milwaukee Road, uh, Walters weathered, yes, Chicago Central engines look that bad, I didn't do the weathering, <laughs> uh, Katie, headlights missing, brief history on Chicago Central, was spun off from the Illinois Central Golf in 1985-ish, purchased by them in 1996, Illinois Central bought the bought by Canadian National in 1999's MIC units, could be lurking around Canada. A set of 3D printed gears for Bachmann GS4 second gen, that could be very helpful, I'll have to try that out because I just got a uh, Bachmann uh, GS4. A pair of strong slot car motor magnets that fit Tyco Power Torque motors, some Bachmann's also. I didn't mo notice much difference, but I don't have an amp meter or voltmeter on my layout. So I believe that's uh, it for the letter. Thank you so much for uh, all the uh, kind words and uh, going ahead and sending all this stuff. Now let's uh, actually dig in. So right off the bat, we got an Athern ready to roll in Illinois Central uh, flat car. And another Illinois Central, Mid-America one. This one uh, has a different paint scheme. There's the uh, Northern Pacific version. Here's a Canadiana boxcar. I like the uh, CN edition. Metal wheels on a Tyco. You just gotta love it. Oh, wow, look at that. It's a Tyco uh, coming around the mountain locomotive. Oh no, this is not a Tyco, it's got an Atlas drive. Wow, that's pretty darn cool. I've wanted one of these for a long time. I, I love the paint scheme, it's just uh, terrific. There's the Illinois Central U-Boat, uh, pretty sharp looking locomotive there. Here's the uh, Hershey's tank car. This is going to look awesome. Uh, we've got quite a few of these now behind the factory. So uh, when I get that building done, it's going to be great. There's an entire lineup of different pieces of rolling stock, and uh, this will be added to that for sure. Oh, very cool. So there's the uh, cabless version of the uh, same locomotive. And there's the uh, Chicago Central locomotive. Looks like it has had some uh, weathering done to it. And there it is, the Union Pacific Tender. Oh, look at that, it's even had a little bit of detail added to it. The wheels are looking mighty shiny. 
What a wonderful gift. That's uh, that's going to look great behind that big boy. Oh, it's a matching caboose for the uh, coming around the mountain locomotive. Can't believe uh, how many other things he went ahead and sent. <laughs> oh, what a beauty. I'm a huge fan of BNSF. Um, I mean, the, the H2 paint scheme is, is just fantastic. I, I love this as well. Absolutely brilliant. It uh, really takes me back to uh, the days of Microsoft Train Simulator because they had a lot of similar locomotives to this. I believe these are uh, all the spare parts. Very nice. I got another trailer. And finally, a KCS locomotive. So fitting for the uh, current time. Well, Richard, I've got to say, I'm uh, I'm quite blown away. I really was not expecting all this stuff. You really went out of your way uh, to, you know, send all the stuff. It's so generous. Thank you so much. We're definitely going to test all the stuff as well as all the other things that have been sent in. But if you can believe it, there are a few more boxes ready to be opened up. So we'll get to that. Now, this next box comes from a guy named Peter Wacko, and I've received some parcels from Peter Wacko before. He's a guy with a really good sense of humor. I find uh, everything he sends has a bit of a story to it. This kind of speaks for itself, but uh, anyway, it looks like he's gone ahead and sent another box. So we'll crack this thing open and see what he's sent. I'm uh, pretty excited to see. Okay, so uh, I just had a quick look at uh, this letter right here. Uh, he asked me not to show it on camera because there are some phone numbers and email addresses, things like that. So uh, I'm going to uh, put that aside and uh, read it myself. But uh, as for the contents of the box, right off the bat, it looks like I've been sent... What is this? Four, five, eight, nine, ten bags of Temptations cat treats. Nerf Cat's gonna have a fit. My goodness, this is just wild. All right, so uh, that's pretty cool. And then uh, there are a whole bunch of various little tasties. Oh, awesome, it's uh, contact cleaner. A lot of people have been suggesting that I get some CRC, so that's uh, that's awesome. Oh, it looks to be a Union Pacific SD 40-2. Caboose and uh, some sort of hopper. Got a few switches. Teriyaki grass-fed beef jerky. This seems like some fancy stuff. Home to rail joiners. And to top it all off, a miscellaneous tree. So uh, that appears to be everything. Thank you so much for uh, everything, Peter. I think that uh, Nerf Cat is going to be thrilled with all the treats. And uh, thanks for sending along all the little bonbons. I'll be sure to share them as the, with the uh, family as requested in your uh, letter there. So yeah, thanks a bunch. I don't know anything about this box. Uh, I already ripped all the labels and whatnot off it, but it does say to open it on this side, so uh, I guess we'll do as such. Hello, Harrison. Inside you'll find the screws you need to fix your Berkshire. I also have put in three River Rossi motors. eBay charges too much, and I have a lot of them. I want to say thank you for getting me back into the hobby after 35 years. I really thank you from the bottom of my heart. God bless you and your family. The only way I could really thank you was this. I built you a train. Hopefully you won't have to fix anytime soon. From all the parts, there is some paperwork inside to explain. Keep up the good fight merry christmas i believe this one uh comes from uh, a guy named cory in new york 
Let's have a look here. So we got some uh, really in detailed uh, diagrams here. Here's uh, a little diagram. This is from Corey. I just uh, redacted this part because his email was on there, but uh, yeah, this sort of goes through and explains everything. So in this uh, package right here, I believe that we have uh, some screws for the Berkshire, which has been out of commission for a long time because I was able, never able to find these screws ever since I lost them somewhere while I was running it during a live stream. And here are the uh, River Rossi motors that he mentioned. I've seen these two variety before, but I've never seen this larger one. Very nice. These will not go to waste. I'm sure that there will be a locomotive in the future, which these will uh, quite happily be put to use on. Now, as for whatever this is. Oh, wow. My goodness, look at that. It's an SMT mainline Berkshire. It's like the decals are so crisp that they almost look factory. It's really impressive. I, I can't wait to uh, run this thing. Uh, yeah, there's some added details on here as well. It looks absolutely mint. I uh, I think it's great. I can't imagine how much effort you put into this one, Corey. So uh, thanks a bunch for that. I'll have to take this over to the track later and uh, test it out. That's for sure. All right, and it looks like we've got one last box to open up, so let's have a look. -see. Hello, Harrison. I hope everything is going well. Congratulations on your channel's fifth year anniversary. Your videos are always informative and entertaining. Here's an early Christmas present in the form of a few trains that I'm sure you'll be able to put to good use. Keep up the great work. Here's many more years of the SMT channel, Mike Evans. All right, well, let's have a look, find out what exactly is uh, in here. Looks like we've got some sort of a Bachman Union Pacific tender. And here's the uh, matching 060 locomotive. Fortunately, it looks like this one has uh, sustained some damage, so uh, it's going to be a project. It's one of the older split frame ones, so those are a little more tricky to work on, but uh, you never know. It might be able to ride the rails again. Ah, oh, sweet. It's a uh, lifelike FP40 dummy locomotive. Check that out. I've already got the powered model, so if we throw some couplers on this thing, it will be mint. Oh, nice. Microcast Tokyo, made in Japan. I have never seen this uh, model of locomotive before. It feels like it's uh, maybe die cast. I don't know. What a unique looking drive. Check that out. That's a really cool little locomotive there. What this is it's a dash 840 that looks like a pretty nice locomotive it looks like there's a piece of rolling stock of some sort in here reading northern that's very nice i believe this is a uh, pennsylvania railroad well, thanks a bunch for all this uh, stuff, Mike. This was really nice of you. I really can't wait to uh, test this locomotive out as well as all the other ones. So I'm thinking what we should do is we should get all of the equipment which is in boxes out of the boxes, take all of the locomotives over to the track, and then have a running session with whatever engines work. Let's do it. I don't know a whole lot about the province in Worcester Railroad, but uh, I'd like to learn more. I, I'm really loving this paint scheme so far. It's, I don't know, it's just really sharp. I think that Atlas might be the only company which is so concerned about their locomotives getting damaged during shipping that they actually bolt them down to the frame here. That looks really nice. Wow. Let's get the other stuff out now.
Well, with our train all set up, I think it's time to test out all these various locomotives. We'll start with the uh, slightly more dodgy ones, like this lifelike, which I think was really sent in as more of a project. But we'll test it out anyways, you never know, these lifelikes can be pretty resilient locomotives. So if we get it all set up here and give it some power... Well, lo and behold, it actually still runs. Like I said, they're very resilient locomotives. Yeah, even the light flashed for a second there. So we've got a runner. Just needs a few repairs here and there. And I got a Mantua Tyco. These are also very tough locomotives. So you never know. This one might just start. I think this one really just needs to have its wheels cleaned more than anything. We'll see if the uh, Bachman here will run. I don't think that this thing is going to go so great just because of the state of the drivers, but we'll test it out anyway just to see if the motor works. And, uh, yeah, the motor's in fact turning over. Uh, the drivers are getting the way of it, but uh, it's certainly not a hopeless locomotive. This is one I'm really curious about. I've never heard of this manufacturer before, so I have no idea what this one's going to do, but let's give it a chance. Well, it's not exactly doing great on the picking up power front, but other than that, it doesn't seem like anything else is wrong with it. Yeah, it's just got a few dirty contacts here and there. Next, we've got uh, the Peter Wacko engine. I feel like this one's been sitting for a while, just judging by the dust and everything, but it is an Atherin after all. And it fires up, no problem. It's actually kind of smooth. Here we got the uh, two switcher set. Now, I didn't realize this earlier, but there is actually a linkage between the two and a wire. I don't know why this back one is electrically connected, because the wheels are non-conductive, but uh, I don't know. Maybe there's a light in this or something. Well, it runs. Yeah, it's got a lot of get up and go. Hmm, very nice. Next, we got the Walters. This one is looking a little worse for wear, but uh, I have no doubts that it's going to start. I don't think it was sent as a project. I bet that this thing is going to be smooth as butter. Yeah. You gotta love the uh, Walters train line locomotives. They really do run well. Those nylon gears just make them so quiet. Yeah, absolutely mint. Next we got the uh, KCS locomotive. This one's an Atherin blue box and uh, it looks to be in great shape. I suspect it's gonna run pretty darn well. Oh, maybe I'm mistaken. Okay, this is a common problem with Atherin Blue Box locomotives. It's a really easy fix. You can see that the headlight is getting power, but there's nothing coming from the motor. The motors in these locomotives are held in by certain mounts, and if the motor gets jostled, it bumps up and can't make contact with the chassis, which is electrically charged, so the engine won't run. So I think that's probably what's happened with this one. Not a hard fix, but uh, it is preventing it from going. Next up, we got the Atlas coming around the mountain locomotive. This one looks to be in really good shape, so I suspect it's gonna go. Oh yeah. Oh, check it out. It's even been uh, modified with uh, LED lights, which are directional. Yeah, this one's a real gem. What a beauty. Got the uh, Athern uh, SD40-2 BNSF. 
I think that this thing is gonna have no issues. Yep, right on the money. Seems perfect. Got the uh, Northern Pacific locomotive. I think this one is a River Rossi. I have one very similar to it. I suspect it's gonna run fine just given its cosmetic condition. Yep. Yeah, it looks like uh, this one's had uh, LED directional lighting added to it as well. I like it. It's kind of funny seeing uh, an older locomotive with modern lighting like that. And then uh, here we've got a very similar locomotive. All this, this one's uh, an Athern Blue Box. I wonder if this one will have the uh, lighting feature as well. Yeah, this one seems to have the uh, conventional lighting that these Atherns are famous for. And now on to the Province and Worcester locomotive. Uh, this thing's a real beauty. I mean, it's brand new Atlas. I find the Atlas engines run really quiet. So let's give this one a little bit of power and see what happens here. Got the direction set wrong. Yeah, there we go. Oh, check it out. It's even got ditch lights. Let's just back this thing up a little bit. What a gem. It's got lit number boards. It's got ditch lights, everything, all the bells and whistles. And given that it's an Atlas, it's pretty darn quiet too. You know, those lights are mighty bright. I love it. What a fantastic locomotive. This thing is definitely going to see a lot of use. I, I already really like it. Here's the SMT Mainline Berkshire made by Corey. I'm really curious to see how this thing goes because uh, a lot of effort has been put into it. I believe it's all DCC equipped. Uh, we'll test it out on DCC power just to uh, test out all the features. It's sound equipped? Oh man, no way. Now, I don't know what it's programmed to. I guess we'll just try three. <laughs> oh. Wow, that is awesome. You got the bell and everything. Nice and bright headlight too. I, I really just can't imagine how much effort went into making a locomotive like this. I mean, like it's it's a River Rossi three pole and it's performing like this. That's just amazing. I'm uh, blown away. And finally, we've got the SD70 ACE. Thank you, Essential Workers Locomotive. We'll uh, set this one to uh, DC power. All right, let's see how this thing runs. <laughs> wow. What a great looking locomotive. It's uh, got quite a bit of get up and go too. It's kind of fast for a modern locomotive. Lit ditch lights, lit number board. That is absolutely fantastic. I love this thing. What an awesome engine. So now that we know the order of these locomotives, I think that we should certainly have a few of them pull some of these train cars around. But before we go doing that, I think we should head over to the N-Scale layout and go test out that equipment. Oh, I think that building looks quite at home here on the N-Scale layout. I like it a lot. Anyways, uh, as for the trains themselves, I went ahead and I set up all the passenger cars. I just decided to uh, take everything out of the box off camera. I wasn't even sure if these were going to fit on the N-Scale layout just due to the radius of track, but uh, so far they seem fine. It's going to be interesting to see how they perform with a locomotive. I also decided to throw the gondola on there. I know it's not realistic, but uh, heck, why not? 
Now, uh, anyways, I certainly want to uh, pull the train with both these locomotives. This one, unfortunately, has a broken rear coupler, so we're going to have to pull it with the front one. The uh, 060, however, is all ready to go, so I think that that will be the engine of choice, at least to start off. I certainly uh, will uh, put couplers on these cars at some point, but uh, I figure since the couplers are already removed, why not upgrade them to knuckle couplers? I just don't have any on me at the moment, so those will have to wait a bit, but uh, they're beautiful cars cars and they're certainly going to be put to use on the layout now anyways let's uh, test out the uh, 060 here i'm really curious to see how this thing is going to perform i've uh, seen some of bachman's smaller engines but uh, they're the older ones which don't have uh, pickups in the tender so i think that this one's got a chance to uh, perform a little bit better let's give it some power yeah it seems pretty good let's back it up and try to couple up to these cars now <laughs> there we go. Oh, check it out. The uh, passenger cars are even lit. That's really cool. I didn't even know that was a feature on N-Scale. What a great little train. It's definitely a little bit of wheel slip. Uh, I mean, we're asking a lot of that uh, locomotive hauling these larger cars around, but uh, you know what? It's doing a pretty good job. So I think that that's uh, pretty good for the 060. Now let's test out the uh, Norfolk Southern Diesel. Now, like I said, we're going to have to uh, use the front coupler because it's the only one that's left. I'll have to just order a whole bunch of couplers, I guess, so we can upgrade this one as well. But anyways, let's see if we can get uh, coupled up here. I think I need to clean my track a bit. There we go. Yeah, fantastic. This one runs really well, too. Well, I'm pretty happy with that. Huge thanks to uh, Robert and Controller Packers for uh, the building and the various cars. I, uh, I love it, and I think it's already improved the N-Scale layout quite a bit. But as I said, there's going to be a lot more N-Scale content coming up, so stay tuned for that. Now, I think it's time to uh, run some uh, different pieces of equipment with those locomotives over there. Well, I hooked up the Berkshire here to all the cars, and I think that it looks fantastic. But one thing that really surprised me was while I was uh, hooking up the cars, I was just kind of pushing buttons, and I clicked one, and uh, this happens. Yeah, that's right. This engine is fitted with way more lights than I thought. There are two here. The uh, cab is lit, and uh, you can't see it right now, but there are actually two on the back. I have no idea how Corey was even able to fit those lights in there, but uh, again, the attention to detail with this thing is just incredible. I am blown away. I mean, I already thought this was a fantastic locomotive, but uh, it's just insane. I, I love it. Anyways, uh, let's uh, take this thing for a spin here. Just awesome.
Well, folks, I think that that's going to be about it for today's video. I hope you all enjoyed. I certainly enjoyed getting to open up all these boxes today. It's just incredible the types of things people have sent in, and uh, I'm absolutely flattered. There's a whole bunch of you I want to thank, so we're going to go through all of those. Starting off with Jim, who sent in the candy, the label lubricants, as well as the locomotive, which unfortunately I guess the raccoons wanted a little more than I did, and they took off with it. But uh, either way, it's the thought that counts. And uh, Jim, I really do appreciate you thinking of me when you were at that train store uh, all those months back. So thanks a bunch for that. Uh, next, I want to thank Robert for the two N-Scale engines as well as the N-Scale rolling stock. I know there isn't as much N-Scale stuff on the channel, but there's going to be more coming up in the not-so-distant future. And I appreciate you sending this stuff along. It's definitely going to be uh, put to good use on there. So uh, stay tuned for the uh, future project. But until then, thanks a bunch for that. Uh, Jared, I want to thank you so much for all the project locomotives. I really can't wait to work on them. I mean, I was kind of surprised that that lifelike still fired up anyway, but uh, either way, the ones that don't work, I'm sure with a little bit of effort, we can definitely get those running again. So thanks a bunch. Uh, controller packers thank you so much for all the birthday wrapped gifts it was very uh, thoughtful i really like the uh, n-scale rolling stock and the ho stuff the n-scale building as well as this absolutely fantastic locomotive i still can't believe you sent this thing in i mean it's just such a beauty it is really awesome i'm sure that a lot of people are really going to want to see this thing run on live stream so thank you so so much for that ridiculously generous uh, Richard, I want to thank you so much for uh, sending in uh, a whole variety of different locomotives and rolling stock. All absolutely fantastic stuff. And uh, yeah, it's all going to be put to great use. And that big boy tender, I think, is really going to go be... It's going to be put to some sort of good cause. I still haven't decided what charity uh, you know we're going to fundraise for. But uh, if you have suggestions, put them in the comments. But uh, either way, Richard, thank you so much for sending that, as well as all of the locomotives and rolling stock. It was very generous of you. Peter, thank you so much for sending the cat treats, all the different candy, as well as the letter. That was just fantastic. I always love reading through those. It's a pretty dandy little locomotive, too, so thanks a bunch for that. Corey, thank you so much for sending in the spare parts. The uh, motors are definitely going to come in handy. I don't know for what, but uh, I'm sure there'll be some River Aussie engine in the future, which they will be useful for. And uh, this Berkshire right here, I mean, this is just amazing. I can't imagine how many hours were sunk into this thing, but uh, it, it, the detail really does show. It's a wonderful locomotive, so thank you so much for that. Uh, it's just absolutely incredible. And then uh, finally, Mike, I'd like to thank you for the uh, two project locomotives as well as the rolling stock and this absolutely fantastic uh, province, uh, province and Worcestershire locomotive. So uh, thank you so much for that. It is an absolutely awesome gift. Anyways, I think that that's going to be it for today's video. I hope you all enjoyed. And with that, I just want to thank you all so much for watching. What do you think, Nerf Cat? Chicken, catnip, and cheddar flavor. <laughs> Is that good?